What's going on, JR Garage? Welcome back to the channel. So here it is, as promised, part two, the full entire install and review of the level three bulletproofing on our 6.0 truck done by the guys over at Bulletproof Diesel here in Mesa, Arizona. If you guys missed last video, be sure to check it out. But we left off starting to tear down the truck. We identified the problems with it and what we were gonna need to do to tackle it. And just in time too, because our truck was the oil cooler was starting to plug up and that would have led to major issues. As you guys know, there are some serious inherent problems with the 6.0 that if you leave them stock, you're pretty much asking for trouble. And in our case, we need a reliable truck. We're gonna be doing a lot of towing with our cars. Speaking of towing, we actually have to go pick up a new supercar we just bought, so that'll be coming. We'll talk about that later in this video. And probably next video, we're gonna go uh, pick that car up. So stay tuned for that. But that's a perfect example. If we're towing around in a $100,000 car, we need a truck that's not gonna break down and leave us on the side of the road. And a lot of you guys will say, you know, why don't you just get a brand new 6.7 then? And the thing is, as you guys know, we're very conscientious. We know the value of a dollar. It's hard for us to spend $80,000 on a brand new truck, knowing it is going to lose a lot of its value. It's gonna de depreciate. And whereas you can buy a 6.0, a U6.0, on, on the market for like five to 15 grand, depending on condition and mileage, as you guys know, we paid $5,400 for our King Ranch F350 with 144,000 miles. So $5,400 and throw money at bulletproofing, mods, fun stuff like that, and save 60,000, over $60,000 over a new truck. Even a used 6.7, you're talking maybe 30, 40, 50 grand, I'd rather save the money. So that's kind of our, our logic there. And it, it's probably what a lot of you guys think as well. So if you are in the market, you know, you definitely got to consider that from the, the value proposition there as well. So yeah, we bought the truck used. We didn't know what bulletproofing any previous owners had already done to it or not. So you'll see the technician Dell got to tear into things and lo and behold, we found that the truck was nearly completely stock. So we had a lot to tackle coming up here. Yeah, and it's literally perfect timing. This truck now is a new lease on life. Um, this whole video is gonna be very in depth. If you guys are diesel guys, six oil owners, you will find this video very informative. Even if you're not into trucks, there's a lot of interesting stuff going down in this video. Plane. So last video ended with Dell just beginning to tear into the truck, take all the old parts off. So that's where we're gonna start this video with getting all the old nasty parts off the truck. And then with the old parts and the new parts side by side, we're gonna grab Jeff, uh, one of the marketing guys at Bulletproof Diesel, and he's gonna explain to us the differences between the old parts and the new parts going on and the solutions they engineered to fix those inherent problems with the 6.0. So stay tuned for the whole video. We're gonna be driving the truck at the end. We live here in Arizona, so it worked out beautifully. We were able to record the entire process. So we really hope you guys enjoy this perspective, being able to see everything get installed on the truck hands-on and us being able to kind of interview the guys working on the truck and have their expertise carry over to the video and explain what they're doing on the truck. Yeah, and maybe also if you're gonna tackle a bulletproofing kit yourself, then this will give you a great uh, a great look into everything and, and what you're getting into. Yeah guys, so subscribe for future modifications to this truck and a whole bunch of things going on with the truck, so you're not gonna wanna miss that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and finish this tear down and uh, get seeing the new parts that are about to go on this truck. So here we go. Guys, do we have a treat for you or what? So Dell spent the entire day yesterday tearing down uh, the truck, getting all the old parts off, and now we have them all side by side, before and after, what's going on, the five main failure points of the 6.0 engine, yep. and Jeff's here to explain some stuff with us and go through each one of these parts and show why the bulletproof parts are just revolutionary and make a huge difference. That's right, so you all saw the big pile of parts yesterday, but these are the major, major points of failure, and so we're super excited to have the old parts off of our truck and the new parts that are going on to our truck and explain why we have to do this and what it's all about. Perfect, where should we start? Here we go. Well, let's start with this big ugly thing right yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> now this is the stock oil cooler for a six liter diesel, the Ford six liter diesel. It's a stacked plate design, so there's uh, layers of coolant and then layers of oil, layer of coolant, layer of oil, uh, and that's how it cools down. Now what happens to this thing is, uh, there's usually some debris in coolant, you know, maybe uh, little bits of particulate, maybe mm -hmm. even some sand left over from the casting of the engine block, 
And what it does is it starts plugging up the coolant passageways mm -hmm. and uh, it just plugs the whole thing up. And when that happens, oil doesn't get cooled in your engine and that's bad. Uh, it leads to a num number of other failures after that. So that's what was happening to us because our, cool, our, our oil temps were going way up there yeah. and he was saying yep. it's starting to plug up. You never want to have your oil temp more than 15 degrees different from your coolant. Yep, we were temp. way yeah. above that. So the best solution to this issue is right here. A simple oil to air oil cooler and it does not use the oil to coolant heat exchanger that's in here that could get pl plugged up doesn't utilize coolant at all to cool the oil and so that way you don't have any uh, coolant issues down line because it's deleted it's improved this is a really robust simple solution and I love it so now our oil temperature will no longer hit that 24 degrees over the coolant temperature anymore with this improvement. Yeah. So we would have led to bigger problems, yeah. like, which, what, what would that lead to? Well, when that happens and this plugs up, the next thing down the coolant pathway is the EZR cooler. Now this is the EZR cooler we found in your guys' truck. Uh, it happens to be an aftermarket one. It uh, looks like a, a Chinese one. It's uh, literally stamped China right on it. Yeah, but it's interesting because uh, when coolant can't get to these things and the, the coolant level doesn't completely bathe it on the inside, mm -hmm. uh, heat expansion starts happening gotcha. and it just pushes these two end plates apart. They, they just rupture themselves apart. Mm. And then you get coolant in the exhaust, uh, you can, which means the coolant can go into the combustion chamber. Uh, just a just a whole mess of problems, but oh, then man. the yeah. EZR cooler will fail too. And you'll notice uh, kind of white smoke out of the exhaust. Is yeah, it? get that big puffs of white smoke. Uh -huh. but it's, it's often indicative. Of no EZR bueno, cooler. not yeah. good. Now yeah. this is the the stock six liter water pump, and uh, a pretty stout unit, except for this impeller right here. This mm -hmm. this propeller looking thing is actually an impeller, uh, but it's made of plastic. It's composite, and this one doesn't look so bad. But we've seen them crack. We've seen these things start to degrade, and they, you can almost crumble them with your fingers. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So what we do is build our own. There we go. It's got upgraded bearings in it. It's got a warranty on it. This is aluminum. These uh, impeller blades are not going to degrade like the plastic ones. So this is a, a great part to have. Plus, it's really pretty. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and the Fickum. Moving on to the Fickum. So the Fickum is the fuel injection control module. So here's a Fickum we pulled out of a six liter. And uh, some of them are four pin, and some of them are, are seven pin, like this one. Uh, mm -hmm. There's not really a performance difference between them, but you, you've got to know which one you have before you replace it. Right. Uh, it's, it's got four circuits in here. And what it does is these electrical components activate the fuel injectors. Uh, it needs 48 volts to activate those injectors correctly for them to, to fire as they should. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen, sometimes these drop below 48 volts. Mm -hmm. So we've developed the bulletproof Fickum power supply. This is a four pin one. Uh, and there are six circuits in here instead of four. It helps share the load, build in some redundancy, so it's just a, a better way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, people always ask about this white stuff in here, and that's just an anti-vibration agent put in there to keep everything where it should be, just an extra level of protection. Now, there are two wires right here, uh -huh. and these are actually settings. This comes at 48 volts from us, but you can set it at either 53 volts or even 58 volts by snipping these wires. Uh -huh. we, we tell you how to do it in the instructions, uh, just for some extra voltage so that you know you'll never drop below 48. Huh. And what happens if you were to drop below 48? Because a lot of trucks do. Sure. Running you, idle. You get, yeah, you get hard starts, a rough idle. Uh, generally, the truck just doesn't perform as it should. You know, mm. the, the injectors aren't putting fuel into the combustion chamber. You want right those way. injectors yeah. happy. Yeah. But definitely okay. very important to know that because you could think that it's an uh, injector problem themselves and those would be super expensive parts. To replace. Great to be knowledgeable about this item. Oh yeah, the peace of mind having that in there. So, so included in stage three, right? Indeed. Right. And so the, the stock six liter uses mm -hmm. torque to yield cylinder head bolts. Now, mm -hmm. those bolts, when you tighten them as they should be tightened to the, the, the correct uh, pressure, they deform a bit. The, the torque to mm. yield bolt is made to deform and what that does is it right. actually helps a little bit in clamping ability because it's really stuck in that, that threaded hole. But what it also does is mm -hmm. makes the bolts not as strong. They've already been deformed. The metal in them has been stretched already. Uh, so a lot of people have uh. problems with their cylinder head uh, gasket being compromised because those bolts lift up just a little bit over full power. Uh, gotcha. And then you know you burn up your cylinder head gaskets and it's all bad from there. So that's why they say running more boosts and tuning your 6.0s without doing studs is asking for <laughs> yeah. trouble. Yep, it is indeed. Now studs are like bolts, but they don't have that, that tip on the end of them. They're threaded at both ends mm -hmm. and you put a nut on there. And believe it or not, that actually helps with clamping force as well because uh -huh. you're not twisting the whole unit. You're mm -hmm. simply, uh, the stud is, is stationary and you're twisting on that fastener. 
And uh -huh. in certain uh, situations, head studs, I've been told from the ARP guys, can clamp up to 20 times as hard as, as that cylinder head bolts. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And they do stuff like they thread these after they've been hardened and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, the, I mean, ARP makes some really good head studs. I think most people know it and you'll hear wow. it from us here. And then as we showed last video with the new heads, which are over there, they're way too heavy to bring in here, but that's also included in stage three. Once again, guys, if you have any questions or if you want any more information, their website is so informative with information that you can see their various stages they do, what kind of products they offer. And again, you don't have to bring your truck to Arizona. A lot of what you do is you ship parts to installers all across across the country. Indeed, yeah, www.bulletproofdiesel.com and you can order anything you see here. Find an and installer. And we've got a great, great team of technicians that get on the phone mm -hmm. that can talk you through anything. They're great guys, yes. love helping out. Give them a call. Everything will be linked down below. Yeah. Phone numbers, websites. Well, let's take a closer look. That's such a giant thing of beauty once again. Dell did an amazing job refinishing and just surfacing everything. This thing was pretty yep. nasty and gunked up before and yeah. now it looks brand new. And a little step of rebuilding the internals on this guy, the uh, the different turbines, because we were having a slight issue on the on the test drive. He was noticing through the through the data logging and everything that uh, that it wasn't building the exact pressure that it was expecting at certain RPMs. Mm -hmm. And so he had the expertise to know that uh, that inside of here is where that problem might have lied. And so he disassembled it, cleaned it, and now we are gonna have an extra freely spooling turbo to get that amazing. Oh, it's gonna sound 10, so 10 good. Hot side sound. I cannot wait. So all these new parts are going on just the moment. We're going to get into some cinematics of uh, Dell going to work, putting all these new parts on. I cannot wait. Just seeing them all in person. This is a this is a rare view. You don't normally get to yeah. see this. And I think this is one of the first videos that it's kind of outlined every single part and why the original one, you know, hasn't lasted and why the new one is, well, pretty close yeah. to bulletproof. Yeah. It kind of depends your budget a lot of times. You don't have to do everything. It's, but having that peace of mind yeah. is also really nice too. Yeah, but, but like, yeah, a lot of people don't don't have the, the resources to do it all at once, which is fine. And, and uh, I would say if you're gonna do just one thing, that mm -hmm. oil cooler is the one thing to do. Mm -hmm. That can lead to so many problems throughout the, the engine and grenade other parts. Speaking of the EGR, we have the demo one here that shows the Helix yeah, kind so of structure. A, this is for a different model truck, but uh, but you can see our internals here. Now this is a patented technology that we've developed, and when the tubes, if for some reason they don't get bathed in coolant, mm -hmm. rather than pushing the ends apart, they're like a braid here, and they can expand yep. laterally, uh -huh. and it puts a lot less force on the end plates of the EGR cooler. The commercial fleet market has really come knocking on our door now that they've seen this. And one thing I saw Ken talking about was the delete it all together or replace it um, debate, and he says how how, you know when you just delete it it could be hiding the the problems yeah. that you really need to get addressed so you yeah, may just delete it when you don't realize it's trying to tell you something it's yeah. saying hey your your oil cooler is really messed up so you guys have a YouTube channel as well all that will be linked down below there's a bunch of resources and their website you can spend just hours watching these videos yeah. and becoming very well educated on the 6.0 and other truck engines too. It's not just the 6.0. They make, you were telling us the, the one EGR for that big international truck that you guys yeah. are using for fire trucks. The and Max Force uh, line of engines from International has just Man. been a huge problem for them. So we're helping to be the solution. Exactly, and that's that's what they have been for all these 6.0 owners. Once the engine that kind of a lot of people were like, mm, we don't really want that now, it's a good engine once yeah. you replace these parts. Like yeah. the known issues, mm -hmm. you replace them, you have a great engine on your hands. Honestly, I'm actually so happy that we ended up with a six liter truck and now to have this peace of mind that, it, that it's bulletproof, it's trouble free, world yeah. worry free. So we're really, really happy with it. Anyway, that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and start installing all these brand new bulletproof parts on the 6.0 and get making one of the most reliable trucks out there. Yeah. All right, let's get to it. All right, look at these beautiful new heads on the truck. And uh, the important part here with the heads, why we had to address these, is because the, uh, the chambers for the passageways for the coolant and the fuel injector port in particular, the tolerance between that is so tight. It's such a thin wall that there have been major issues with cracking between that. And then you've got fuel in your coolant, and again, another issue. But you will notice that there's a little sleeve in there in that fuel injector port. And so um, they perfectly bore it just a little bit to put in that reinforced sleeve 
and that way there won't be the same cracking. And here is the new oil distribution block, taking it to a uh, remote oil filter. Going to an oil to air radiator oil cooler. Right behind and, the condenser. Uh, and a much better filter sitting up here. Okay, awesome. And, uh, what else? Ooh, gosh. ooh, ooh, I see new shiny parts. Um, he was explaining how he did the Blue Spring model already. So that will increase fuel pressure from, I think he said, 55 pounds to maybe 65. Yep, so that's this guy in here. Speaking of refinishing, oh the newly refinished turbo, specifically a 10 blade turbo out of a 2003, which produces a much, much, much more pronounced turbo whistle. That's in here on the hot side. Let's see if we can show that. There we go, count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This gives it a much more pronounced, cool sound. <laughs> All right guys, now that we have a thorough understanding of all these new parts going onto the truck, we are on the final stretch. We are just one cinematic edit away from a startup for the first time. But hopefully, hopefully before we do that startup, we're gonna get a chance to see the tank, literally 65 ton tank in action, and we have something special that we're going to crush. So stay tuned for that. Without further ado, let's get into a little cinematic goodness and get approaching this first startup. Here we go. All right guys, it is time for an update because as you can see, the cab is back on the truck. They have made incredible progress. It's close to closing time, but they are working extra double time with four guys working on the truck so that hopefully we can get a first startup today. Very excited to see everything coming together. It is a well-oiled machine here and Hopefully the truck is too. Look at them all. We cannot thank them enough. All four guys pitching in, even though they could be going home right now. They are here working on the truck, getting it done, and it's coming together like a glove. They are just cranking away like a well-oiled machine. We are minutes away from startup, the first startup with the new parts. And so tomorrow in the same video, we'll be able to take the car for a thorough test drive, really put everything to the test, all the new parts, make sure that it is 100%. Oh yeah, I cannot wait for the first test drive. All right, Christian, so it just so happens today's Friday, and today's the day that they back the tank back into its little storage area here for the weekend. So we are lucky enough to hear it start up and to see it move, which is insane. Wow, I've never seen something like this in person. Whoa, 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 I hear noises. Whoa. So that's it? It's running? No, that's a generator. Oh, crap, okay. Yeah, so I was gonna say, this thing's a Prius hybrid. Turn the generator on first just to get the engine started. Okay. Oh, yes. We found something to crush. This is our old office printer that everyone hated. Perfect. I mean, this thing frustrated people for years. So. No way. This is the perfect crush. There we go. All right, we're good. Nice, direct kill. Always clean up your messes here at Bulletproof Diesel. Oh, no, toner. Oh. All right guys, so that is how you run over a printer with an 130,000 pound tank. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Should we buy a tank? That's the question. 
All right, we are moments away from a first startup. Here we go. Wow, she's alive. Another bulletproof diesel on the road. That's so incredible that they can literally have the truck in a million pieces and then two days later put it all back together and have it start up first try like that. I always forget something. I always leave something unplugged. All right guys, it is Monday and that means it is pickup day. We are just moments away from pulling up to Bulletproof Diesel and we literally cannot be more excited. Today's the day. We're excited to have the car, the truck back so soon and maybe just in time for this new car pickup. Here we are pulling up now. There we, it is. Oh my gosh, it's outside along with their tank, of course. <laughs> Every week they have their tank out. So if you guys are ever in the area, you can literally come check out their tank. There's our truck. They have it pulled out and around. So that means it is ready for the test drive. So let's get in there and meet up with the guys. Before we can take the car away, we want to take it for a test drive to see all the improvements made, especially compare it to our initial test drive and compare those figures, those uh, parameters, and make sure we're all in the green, which I'm sure we will be. Especially the coolant and oil temps. And that oil temp was getting way too hot. Yes, yeah, so but right. now. Previously there was a 24 degree spread, and you want that to be as close as possible, and it should be. Well, originally it should have been because it was an oil to water heat exchanger, so it should have been really similar. But now with the oil to air, a dedicated oil cooler, it's just gonna run, run much better. We will see what we got. Dell's hooking up all the computers. Okay. Maiden voyage, sounding better already. Oh man, oh man. And then we got all the parameters set up. We'll keep an eye on the oil and coolant temperatures and everything also else. Also the uh, manifold pressure and boost pressure to uh, see that before and after on the turbo. So you went through and uh, reconditioned the turbo and stuff, but do you think the boost pressure is going to change at all or Probably about, about the same? Because the, yeah, the overall is going to be about the same. Yeah. And the uh, coolant and oil temp mm -hmm. doesn't matter now because we don't have uh, liquid exchange. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So it's before that was just an indicator that your oil cooler is plugging up. Now you don't have that oil cooler to even plug up. So Perfect. I like it. And they're in two separate circuits. Man, that is... Quick. Wow, that's quick. Oh yeah, you can hear that turbo way more now. So quick look at the temperatures. The coolant 188 and oil 192. Look at that, under control, beautiful. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. No more 24 degree spreads. Oh, nice, 53 volts on the Fickum. Exactly what we had it set at. Before, did we see what it was at or was it, it dropping was, at it all? It was going to about 46 and a half. Okay, oh, so okay. a little bit low. So that's now bumped up. Man, this truck is just running like a dream. All right, pulling up, we're back. Test drive complete. You guys saw just the portion of it, but we did a pretty thorough drive and everything checked out. You agree, Dell? Everything's looking yeah, good? Looks great. So, another stage three in the books. You've done hundreds. This one overall, you said it's a pretty clean truck, yeah, relatively. Yeah. And yeah, it turned out really well. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Awesome. All right, guys, our first startup since the bulletproofing. Here we go. No lights on the dash. Dell said the entire install went great and the truck is ready to go for many, many, many years to come. So long bulletproof, it was an amazing experience, but hey, it's time to get driving this truck. Oh, listen to that turbo whistle. And this is still with a cat and a muffler. Wait till we really do a full exhaust. Oh, I'm in love, I'm in love. That new, newly conditioned turbo, working like a champ, all right. Time to hit the road.
Well guys, that is a wrap. So excited for what's to come. We're so happy with how it turned out. A truck that can be fun, that you can have a budget left over to, to make it your own. That's the thing, you can buy a 6.0 for really cheap nowadays because they're an older truck and you can throw five, 10 grand into modifications and bulletproofing or more if you wanna go really crazy. And then you can have a truck that is just as reliable, if not more reliable than those 6.7s moving forward because the 6.7s aren't perfect either. You know, you gotta keep in mind, they got a lot more emissions restrictions, right? With That's right, those 6.7s, not very mod friendly and also the new emissions regulations with the blue def. And you don't have that here on the 6.0s. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense and the aftermarket's huge on these things. And come on, like the sound guys, this is the oh. one of the best sounding diesels ever. And especially once we throw the exhaust on, it's going to sound mental. Oh. It's gonna sound like a jet engine for sure. So a bunch more mods on the way. Like we mentioned before, we got the Yokohama tires coming with the new wheel setup. Not sure what brand of wheels we're gonna go with yet, but that'll be determined soon. We already have the suspension done. Previous owner did Fox Racing suspension all the way around. We wanna do the interior. As you guys can see, we actually have a newly wrapped steering wheel. You guys dropped a lot of comments saying, hey, you need to redo that steering wheel, it looks terrible. I agree, it did look really bad. It had a ton of wear and it just started to get really black. So before, and after. So it looks a heck of a lot better and this is thanks to Richmond Upholstery in Texas. They sent us out the rewrap kit. We're also gonna do the seats in the upcoming weeks, Re uh, completely recover these so that they look brand new. So interior will be done. The engine's now done, wheels and tires, exhaust, so much happening that you're gonna wanna stay tuned for. So subscribe to the channel if you're new, drop a comment down below on what mods you wanna see and yeah. what- Comment on the exhaust in particular because we're not totally dead set on which direction we're going with that yet. So we'd definitely love to hear your guys' opinions and expertise for owners out there. We could do a full straight pipe. You guys really want that. Although that becomes, especially on the 2003s with the uh, louder turbo, it becomes so loud. Um, I mean, maybe we're down, but we could also just do like a muffler delete, something like that and keep the cat but let's hear what you guys say in the comment section down below. Mm -hmm. And like we said earlier in this video, if you guys want, if you guys have a 6.0 or any other diesel for that matter that, um, that Boltproof makes parts for, be sure to yeah. give them a call, send them an email, check out their website, there's tons of good information. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you Boltproof for being some of the awesome guys in Arizona doing amazing modifications. I mean, barely modifications, just making trucks what they should have been from the factory. So this thing has a new lease on life, many, many years and thousands and thousands of miles to come. So thank you once again, and we will see you guys in the next video. Take care, have a good day.